Welcome back to another killer collaboration. Right now, I'm joined with Nick, not Nikki Bella, suit and tie movie guy. How's it going? You know, I feel like I'm spending a lot of time in this room with you. Well, we spend a lot of time in closed rooms together. I don't really know argument for that, but that's, that's a conversation for not on YouTube. Well, I don't know if it's going to be an argument. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know if you guys saw last... Well, it wasn't last week. It was probably like 10 days ago. We did yeah. a, we did another killer collab with, uh, what movie did we do? Scream. We did Scream. We did Great. Scream. My Sorry, I have, three. I have so many episodes going through my head right now because I edit all of them. So it's kind of... I don't this, feel sorry for that. You know he doesn't. He really yeah, doesn't. No. I, I go through a lot of pain, nights, sleeplessly, like laying there thinking about edits that I'm trying to I make him like. look good. And, you know, it's really hard to do. Yeah, so it's the not edit, hard to do. Look at this. So wow, look at this. Look at this. Ooh, yeah. As you will see the edit. <laughs> So, you know, we did my number three, uh, which was Scream. Um, I'm sorry. No, yeah, yeah. We did my number three, which was Scream. I don't know. I just did a number two. So does that count? <laughs> I don't think so. It oh. might. I mean, how was it? Did it come out? It was wonderful. I, you know, we're going to lose subscribers talking about this. But we went for my number three, and you brought me back in today for a very specific reason, because now we're going to my number two favorite movie of all time. So... You haven't, you've seen it, but you don't really know a whole lot about it, so why don't you tell them what movie that is? I did, I know, I don't have a lot of uh, familiarity with this. I saw it probably 15, 10 years ago, and then I was like, you know what, let's do this project, let's get it done. Um, his number two was Jaws. Jaws. Yep. Now, I, I know of it being this first summer blockbuster, and you yep. know, I, I watched it again last night. Um, it you still freaked asleep. me out. Yeah, I definitely fell asleep. But it did <laughs> freak me out a little bit. Embarrassing. Yeah, you know, um, I remember... The first time I saw it, and, and my memory on this is a little a little uh, off sometimes, but I believe the first time I ever saw a Jaws movie was actually the third one. My mom uh, yelled at me and told me to turn it off. I, I was probably about six or so, and I ended up still watching it, and I ended up seeing the fourth movie, and I remember my dad telling me about it. Like, he was telling me the story how there's three guys, and they're on a boat, and he's shooting barrels, and in my head, I'm picturing like a Coast Guard ship, and no. and yeah. Jack Daniels barrels, the old school wood barrels, cool, with wood, the metal yeah. rings. So that's what I saw. And then I went to my grandma's, my grandparents' apartment, and I was seven years old, and I remember it came on, and I was so excited, and they let me watch it in their bedroom, and that was my first time ever watching it. And then I saw the second one, and so you watched it backwards. Yeah, pretty much, all all yeah. out of order. And actually, about. Oh, almost a year ago, I think it was like August or September of last year, they, uh, down at Caddy's on the beach. Um, okay. If you oh. guys want to sponsor us, I know the uh, man. Please. Uh, please. <laughs> uh, but uh, Caddy's on the beach, Treasure Island, Florida, um, they were showing it at nighttime. Oh, and yeah. And they oh, had yeah. two blow-up screens. One of them was facing the, the water, and the other one was facing the restaurant. So... Um, we were actually sitting in the water, and this was about a week before that real bad red tide came in. Okay, yeah. So you're talking about the movie that, that literally made people scared to go into the water, and we were watching it at night. In the water. In the water. I couldn't do that. With no. dead fish floating everywhere. <laughs> no, see, I don't, I don't even go to, in the water too much now, just the thought of Jaws. Just, just, the, yeah. just the thought of just, you know, sharks and everything like that, and... Um, I, I just can't, no, I don't even go to the water barely well, now he, living he, in Florida. You know, Benchley, who uh, wrote the book, uh, Peter Benchley, he okay. he actually said years later that if he had known more about sharks, he never would have written it because uh, a lot of sharks died a lot because of this movie, because of the fear that it put into okay. people. They thought yeah, they were monsters. And um, I don't know if you know this, and I actually didn't even put this in my notes. I can't believe I didn't think about this, but the movie Jaws was inspired by, somewhat by true events, uh, the Jersey Shore attacks of, oh God, it was somewhere between 1914, or I'm sorry, 1912 and 1916. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. But, really? But it was, it was... Uh, I, I think it was about a two or three week period, and I, I'm sorry if the details escape me. Please tell me in the comments what I got wrong. But 
there were two people killed. I have a little segue with that too, as soon as you finish, yeah. your, finish your thing. But I have a segue that actually just happened this weekend in, in, okay. in my hometown in New Jersey. Yeah, there was two. There was two uh, uh, people killed. Uh, one of them was like the, the grandson or son of a hotel owner. Oh, uh, wow. okay. He bled out, and then um, someone else was killed. Uh, it's you know, like a week or so later up the coast, but then there was a string of attacks in a very short period of time in Matawan Creek. Yeah. So. What happened was a a boy was a little boy was attacked who was swimming and this guy Stanley Fisher I believe his name is again I don't have notes on this guy this is off the top of my head so I'm sorry if I got anything wrong but well if you guys know the story you guys could fact check us and just let yep. us know because we would like to know any more details yep. that you may possibly know I mean I I know pretty good stuff off the top of my head but his name was Stanley Fisher he jumped in to try to find the boy's body uh, I I don't remember I think he did find it and then the shark attacked him. Oh, so okay. not only was uh, the little boy attacked, but he was also attacked. Now, both of them unfortunately died, and a third person was attacked, a third little boy. So, for three people to be attacked in the the in the the uh, period of just a, like an hour, yeah, that's in a one location, you have to pretty much assume that that. Could, Probably be the same shark. Definitely the first two. Yes. Yeah. And that's just. Well, do they travel in schools? Do they tra multiple? Uh, yeah, come yeah. But but when you start <clears throat> talking about shark attacks, I mean, I mean they're few and far between. They are but... very. And the the odds of the same shark attacking the the people on the beaches a couple weeks prior as these three people is very slim. But it, you got to believe that minimum two of those three in that creek were the same shark probably all three yeah that is unheard of because sharks are not eating machines shark attacks are extremely rare you're more than likely you're more likely to get killed by a falling coconut and for that many for for that to happen in just an hour period of time three separate people two dying yeah from a shark is absolutely insane. But uh, there's been a lot of debate over the years. Was it a bull shark? Was it a great white? Um, they found a juvenile great white with human remains in it. Um, but generally, uh, they don't travel upstream like bull sharks do. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, it, you can make a case that the great white at least was responsible for something, but it was a real small one. I mean, it was only about eight or nine feet. I say real small, but, wow. you know, that's, great, that's pretty big. Eight great whites feet? generally get usually top out around 17 to 18 feet. They've caught a couple that are in that 20 to 21 range in Jaws. It's a 25-foot shark. They have yet to officially document a 25-foot shark, but they have seen deep blue that's about 20 feet. But anyway, we're getting a little... <laughs> well, real quick, uh, this past weekend, actually in Brigantine, New Jersey, they actually caught three sharks, and actually the smallest one was six foot. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually, there was a fisherman just fit, caught one, and then actually throughout the, the whole weekend, they caught three total, mm -hmm. in, and the island's only seven miles long. Wow. So we had the one North Beach, we had one in South Beach, uh, off the um, off the jetty, and then we also had one in Midtown, which was really weird. I found, saw it on Facebook, a friend of mine actually took pictures of it, um, it, it just saw it on Facebook. I want to actually get more details so I can actually advise you guys of any other details that I might find out later. But that is just something that you know, just coincided with what we were doing, and it was just really strange. I saw it on Facebook today mm -hmm. that just happened this weekend. Yeah, you know, th there was uh, uh, Deep Blue, the shark I was talking about. She has been pregnant, I believe, in every video that they have. They think she's about 20 feet, maybe 18 to 20 feet. Okay. Um, absolute behemoth. She's huge. They found her in Hawaii. 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 And the one of the girls got out and swam with her. It was amazing. But uh, to date, I believe this is one of the largest sharks. <clears throat> so that shark, uh, if we can believe what was written, uh, was 20 feet, 8 inches, and I believe just over 5,000 pounds. And that was a deep blue one? Uh, no, that one was a, a, a shark caught by Vic Haslop. He was basically a, a guy that killed thousands of great whites um i mean he was basically like quint in the movie okay yeah um but yeah that was one of the biggest ones that i've seen um and i actually have a room in my house uh that is you, you know this you've seen it yep. it's it's jaws and jurassic park wow those are nice so let's dive into the movie i know you're not quite as familiar with it as i am so uh the beginning of the movie is quite possibly one of the most terrifying opening scenes of any movie. I mean, we're coming off of Absolutely. Scream. Yeah, yeah. Scream had a great opening. Um, but we see Chrissy Watkins, uh, you know, the, uh, her and this guy, I don't remember his name, but 
Uh, they're drinking. They're on the beach. They're partying. They're having the a bonfire. Good time, having a bonfire. She says, "Let's go swimming." He's drunk, trying to get his clothes off, and she dives out, and we get just an absolutely uh, just as, horrific opening. As he passes out, just on the beach. <laughs> he passes out, guys. You know, drinking can save you, apparently. So uh, her name was Susan Backlany. I believe I said that right. And um, during this scene, she actually, uh, here's a couple fun facts. She was strapped to a harness, and they would run up and down the beach to jerk her back and forth. And it was actually shot during the day, and then they edited it. How, how far, did it say how far out that she actually really uh, was? I don't think it was that far. I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Uh, but the first tug down where, you know, a lot of times sharks really do this. They'll kind of come up and taste Nip test you and then uh, and then do what they got to do. But <clears throat> the first tug, she said, was done by Steven himself. And then they would run up and down the beach. And as in a lot of films, they dub over sounds and everything mm -hmm. after the fact because yep. sometimes they don't get good quality sound. So to get the gurgling sound of her screaming as if she was in water, they sat her upside down and dumped water down her throat while she was... <laughs> she was waterboarded. Oh! She was waterboarded. <laughs> yeah, she, was, she was waterboarded and paid for it. I mean, oh, man. Um, but uh, when, we, when we meet our main character of uh, Martin Brody, played by Roy Scheider, he actually wasn't the first choice uh, to play. The only actor in the entire movie that was the first choice of Steven Spielberg and, and, and company was um, Murray Hamilton, who played the mayor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, everyone else was second, third choice, etc. cetera. But, uh, so Roy Scheider plays Martin Brody. Um, and he's going down to investigate everything, and they find the severed arm in the seaweed with the crabs all over. So they'd actually done uh, a prosthetic arm, and Spielberg said it looked too fake, so they covered it with seaweed, put the crabs in, and got a close-up shot. Is that when the deputy found it? Uh -oh. Yeah, yep, it? yep. Okay. Um, I, his name, oh, God, I cannot remember. It might come to me. He, he was in Clue, also. He played the oh, okay. Um I wish I could remember what his real name is, and I, I know it. But what character did he play? In uh, he, he Hendrix, Deputy Hendrix. Okay. Oh, in Clue, he was the motorist. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so <clears throat> you know, he calls the medical inspector. Medical inspector says shark attack, and then uh, Martin uh, Martin Brody orders uh, Hendrix to go and. Uh, make beach clothes signs, and the mayor catches wind, and they're like, no, 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 you can't do that, you know, because they're panicking, you know, they, this is a beach, yeah. uh, 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 they rely on summer money. But what do you expect when he actually said it was a shark attack? Like, what kind of reaction would you expect to get? Right, like, exactly, and and they end up having the medical inspector come out and say, oh, I was wrong, it was a, it was a boating accident. He, so, he said he was wrong. <laughs> so right off the bat. Slid in money. Right, yeah, exactly. Right off the bat, you know, we see... Uh, Brody trying to do the right thing, and the mayor's obviously money motivated. I wouldn't oh, say absolutely. a bad guy, looking out for his town, and and you know, yes. in most situations, you know, people don't expect a killer shark. You no, know, so. like I said, they're few and far between. So you right. know, th th they said it in the movie. I said like th this has never happened in this area. So you know, I think that's what they're basing their opinion on, and you know, and I mean, the sheriff actually takes good dra dra dramatic. Um, um, Way Charge. of doing it, yeah. Yep. And, and I like it. And, you know, uh, the the fictitious town of uh, Amity, which is the island that they're on, is supposed to be, like, New England-based. He's from New York. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, we get a little bit of an introduction to everybody and kind of see how the characters are as far as the, the mayor and, and Brody. And and we come to... You see different dynamics. Yeah, exactly. The, the power. There's a lot of really good star power. Robert Shaw, we'll get into him yeah. later. But, so, you know, then we get the beach scene where... Uh, the attack on the little boy happens. Uh, you know, we see the dog, uh, Pippet. Um, they don't actually show the attack, but kind of see what's going on um, uh, with the owner, and then the shark goes up missing. So at the beach scene, you know, we see a lot of people bugging Martin, and you could tell he's he's got some issues going on. You know, he's thinking about what, what happened. Well, he's on edge. He's definitely on edge. Definitely on edge. So, you know, he keeps seeing stuff in the water. and, and Paranoia is setting exactly. in. Exactly. And um, <clears throat> he's actually terrified of the water, which is funny because he lives on an island. And, yes. you know, there's a couple lines. You know, it's only an island if you look at it from water. And, <laughs> but, um, you know, he keeps seeing things um, in the water that... He oh, yeah. thinks they're sharks, and he finally starts calming down a little bit, and then we get the attack on the little boy. And the attack on the little boy was supposed to go a lot different. Um, 
Well, everyone I mean, thought that the woman was going to get, you know, the the little heftier woman was yeah, going to get yeah, a little. Yeah, her and then. I the, mean, I, I kind of would have preferred it because you know, I, I, I would have too. I will, well, yeah, <laughs> longer meals, stretch out. Anyway, but uh, I just I just don't like things when they have it the kids. I just it, it's just a thing for it, me it, it, personally. It, and a lot of people are like moves. that. And see, I'm the complete opposite because a lot of you don't see it coming. So, no, absolutely, and I don't want to see it coming. Like, I, like I, I, I have a, you I know, do. see kids. I don't like, I don't like bad things happen to kids. I don't I want do. to see them die. I don't want Not to see in them. Not real life. I don't well, like, life. like movies like The Omen and oh, yeah. um, uh, no. Okay. But see, like, I think. That, I love it when it happens in movies because it's not expected. And I, I think everyone should be fair game in movies like this. Good guys, bad guys, kids, adults, animals, everything should be fair game. That's my opinion. But so that the scene with the little boy, uh, I mean, pretty terrifying as it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but when they tested the mechanical shark for Jaws, they tested it in the Universal Swimming Pool. Now, they picked Martha's Vineyard because... Uh, as far out as you can go, not as far as you can, but you go far out off the off the beach, and it's still a sand bottom. So it worked perfect with the mechanical shark, but they didn't test it in salt water, so it kept failing. Mm. So Spielberg had to come up with different ways, and we'll get a, more into that a little bit later. But he had to come up with different ways to disguise the shark, uh, to show that the shark was there without actually showing it. So there was actually a picture. So they had to get really creative, <laughs> right? Really creative, and just right. hiding. Yeah, and if you actually check out this picture here. So that picture shows really how shallow the water was there, but you were supposed to see the shark fully come out and swallow the little boy, but the logistics of it, it was terrifying as well. There was a, a few scenes in this yeah. movie that, the movie ended up having to be PG because they didn't have PG-13 back then. So it was either R or PG. PG. And, you know, I, I think if you had to choose between the two, R would have been the way to go, but yeah. the movie producers well, obviously I didn't want that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. But that, I mean, there was some blood, and there was some, you know, just just the just the fact of thinking and just messing with your mind that much. Just, I think it would deserve an R rating. The little boy dies, and there's blood in the water, and now everyone knows we have a shark attack. And that that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I mean, I, I love the whole movie, but I particularly love that scene. Um, you know, you don't like I said, you don't expect the kid to die. I know you don't like it, but I really don't like it. <laughs> so they come into a town hall meeting, which is you know you're gonna you're gonna meet Quint, who's played by Robert Shaw. Yep. Uh, sadly, he passed away just a few years after the movie uh, was made. So they're talking about you know are you gonna close the beach? You know this is how we make our money, and the mayor being ever the money hungry man that he is says we're only gonna close it for twenty four hours. Um, so Mrs. Kintner, who... Well, I think he did that just to calm the people down because the people were just going nuts. Yeah, you know, and, and I get it. It's their the livelihood. People. But, yeah, yeah. you know, it's sad that, that you know, they're more worried about money than the fact that a little boy just died. But... Uh, well, think of the long-term effects. Like, if you, mm -hmm. you're going to damage your town's reputation by having more shark attacks, so people are not going to want to come in the future anyway, so why as well just close it now and just say, oh, we care about our, the, our visitors, our guests that come to our, right. fish, our our town and spend money, rather than having the stigma of being a shark attack town. Exactly. You know, in a realistic standpoint, if you waited a few days, you'd be fine. But, yeah. um, so we get introduced to Quint because Mrs. Kintner, who was the mother of Alex Kintner, was a little boy that died, yes. put a $3,000 bounty on the shark. So well, think about it. It's 1975. $3,000. That's a lot lot of money <laughs> so quint comes in and he's no i value my neck a lot more than three thousand bucks chief <laughs> i'll find him for three so he basically says listen this is what i do for a living okay pay me ten thousand dollars and i'll kill the shark for you yep. they take it into consideration and well i don't know about that um but gives you a little bit of insight on the type of uh, character that Quint is, and Robert Shaw was known for his drinking problems, which again yeah. we'll get into a little more later during the in Indianapolis scene. But, um, you know, this scene has a lot of uh, Martha's Vineyard locals. Um, okay. A lot of the locals were used for filming in this like movie. extras and stuff. Yeah, yeah, extras, yeah. even some bigger parts. Um, 
uh, Ben Gardner, uh, the little boys, the, the the kids in the movie. Okay. Um, yeah. All of them were extras. Well, the budget on this wasn't that big, so I wouldn't expect them using you know out of town people uh, rather than using the townspeople for the actual town. Right. Of course. Um, and they actually shot it during the winter, so a lot of the beach scenes were freezing. In the water was really cold. Actually, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't think it was winter directly, but it, the water wasn't warm yet. So uh, it brought a lot of people to Martha's Vineyard, though. You know, at that point, you know, people knew about it, but. The amount of tourists the following no. year uh, went up to fifteen thousand from I believe two or three thousand. So, you hmm. know, we meet Quint, we meet some of the, uh, you know, some of the locals, and uh, Robert Shaw actually, when he did this movie, was so in debt to the IRS he didn't make any money. <laughs> All of his money went directly. Well, that's what actually happened to Nicolas Cage. Nicolas yeah. Cage did exactly the same thing. Like he owed so much money, he just did every movie that he could Everything. possibly think of. Well, oh, you, oh, you want me to do climb down this to jump down that? Oh, well, I'll do it. Let's do it. Well, yeah, you know, I, you know, coincidentally, uh, Nicolas Cage did an Indianapolis movie. With, yeah, and and that's one thing that I I really seven degrees I, of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I really I really can't believe that they haven't done. A, a big budget Indianapolis movie mm. with the shark attack because you know you have a history movie a war movie you get some good actors and you add sharks yeah and I don't yeah. want to dive too much into the Indianapolis hey, let's write scene. it you know let's put it on the back burner let's, let's put yeah. it together yeah I mean it's not going to be a big budget but you know yeah. we'll see what we can get I think I got like a few grand uh, but I can, what can that buy us a couple grand's worth of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> can that buy us uh, like one tenth of a frame of a second? I mean, I, I could do so, I could do a lot of green screen work. I don't know about the CGI. What's a green screen? I have no idea. <laughs> don't touch it. So, uh, as the movie progresses, um, we start seeing that all these people are coming in. The beaches are closed, and we have all these tourists coming in. Um, but before that happens. One of my favorite scenes is the dock scene, where there's two fishermen. Uh, we we kind of get a glimpse into Chief Brody's home right before that. Yes. Um, him and his wife are you know talking. He's preoccupied looking at shark books, and you know she says her "want to get drunk and fool around" <laughs> uh, line that she says in both the first and the second movie. Um, she just likes to fool around. She, yeah, you know, and she, uh, she, I say she, her name's uh, Elaine Gary. She was the wife of uh, one of the studio heads. And even though she very likely got put into the movie because she was married to him, I think she did a great job. Uh, she was also in the second one and in the absolutely atrocious fourth movie. Mm. <laughs> oh. Which I don't When think, you get to four, you it, just... Yeah, yeah, it was really bad, though. It's, it's to date one of the worst movies of all time, but that's... That's a story for another that day. That list is so. so big, though. That list of horrible movies of, of oh. all time is huge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still better than Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're at their house, and we we see that, you know, Martin's looking through the books, and mm -hmm. his son is sitting in his new present, which is a little sailboat. A little catamaran. He starts freaking out. You know, the mom's like, hey, settle down. He's not going to ever go in the water after today. He's like, oh, no, 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 I, I don't want that to happen. She flips the page in the book, sees a drawing of a shark attacking a boat, and she's like, get out of the water. Oh, yeah. The mom says, oh, yeah. get out of the water. You I would have already moved out of this town or moved to it. I would have moved <laughs> off the water. Well, they, they, they came from New York where murders were prevalent everywhere. So, you yeah. know, there hasn't been a shooting or a murder in this town, as he says. So, uh, so we you know, we see the kids. We see... The, you know, the type of family that they have. And, and, you know, he's looking through the book. And one of the pictures in the book, and again, fact check, if I get this wrong, please tell me about it in the comment section. But one of the pictures was of a fatal shark attack. I don't believe that we can show this. I No, we cannot. We um, cannot. There's too much going on. In, it's uh, really bad. Yeah. Um, I believe it's Barry Wilson. It was in the 1950s. And if my memory serves me correctly, it was the first ever uh, recorded fatal shark attack in California. And the picture that I'm talking about, if you've seen Jaws, you know what it is. It's a medical examiner's table. There's a dead body of a young person yes. and his entire hamstring is torn out. There's bite marks that are, I would say, probably a good 15 to 16 foot shark at least. Yeah, and the pictures are just dev definitely disgusting. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's looks like a, like a cadaver that they were operating right. on, yep. like, like just to test them stuff out. Well, the shark severed his femoral artery. So he bled out before, uh, reaching shore and there's, you know, flesh hanging down, but oh, yeah. go check it out. And if I got the names wrong, tell me about it. So, uh, you know, we skip ahead 
in the movie, and this is the scene I was talking about. I got a little ahead of myself, as I normally do. Um, okay. We have two of the uh, Amity residents, and they... Excuse me. No. They... <laughs> <laughs> They take a boat over to the opposite side of the island where the chief is, and they've got uh, Charlie's wife's hol- uh, holiday roast. It's a big roast, and they put this huge hook through it, and they attach it by a chain to a uh, a flotation ring. Yep. And they throw it out. Ty takes it out. And this is just an example of Spielberg's masterful mind showing terror suspense without having to show the shark well it's a mystery of the unknown like it's it's mm-hmm. that whole thing like the with the fog yep. um was it almost identical the, the same too. way oh the mist absolutely yep. you just it's just the fear of the unknown and that's that's very prominent in a lot of these movies yeah well they were forced to make a lot of changes because they didn't have the mechanical shark to shoot a lot of these scenes so which is actually, I think, that why they didn't get the R rating, because they couldn't show yeah. a lot of it. And, and I think it, if, if they had shown the shark as much as they wanted to, it would have been shown in the opening scene. It would have been shown in the dock scene. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't use the barrels. I don't think it would have been as good a movie. It would have just been another monster flick. Well, there was that, only that unknown's gone. Yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's four minutes of shark time in this movie. It's similar to Jurassic Park, where there's 14 minutes of dinosaur mm-hmm. time in the first movie. So we see, we see that the... Did they have CGI back then in 75? No, no, no. Nothing? No. I mean, really. Not even a little bit? I think uh, The Abyss was one of the first like real CGI, and then Terminator 2, and then Jurassic Park put it on the map. Hmm. Now there's way too much. But I saw an earlier green screen in on the movie, like when he's actually ta- when he's actually looking out in the water before the, the, the boy gets killed. Mm-hmm. You could see that there's a green screen behind because he, the one guy's talking to him, yep. and then behind him is just like a green screen. It looks awful. So, <laughs> so we see we see that the uh, the flotation device that has the roast on it starts going out, and the dock gets torn up, mm-hmm. and uh, Charlie falls in the water, and you got his buddy there going, Charlie, don't look back, and the music, similar to Halloween, which I think you're going to be doing, or you already did a um, yes a breakdown of. So similar to Halloween, the music makes the movie. John Williams. Really put himself on the map here, and this scene is. He's no John Carpenter, though. Yeah. Well, I think it's a little. He's a director versus a eh, he music composed composer. Too. He composed too. John Carpenter. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> the music really makes a scene. We see instead of the shark, we see the dock, the dock, not the dog sock, the dock uh, piece that was torn off. Oh yeah. Jetting through the water while he's screaming, "Get out! Get out!" And the music's hitting, and then eventually, you know, he. Gets away. It's tormenting. Oh, tormenting. Yeah, it really is. Um, uh, that's it's a beautiful scene. I mean, suspense, suspense. Suspense, absolutely. I don't know about beautiful. It's art. It is. No, it's art. an art. Like I said, there's a difference between art because there's a lot of art that's not beautiful, but it still has like a art to it. Okay, whatever. <laughs> beautiful. So, <laughs> so after that, you know, they, uh, we come in and we see Hendrix and, and, and Martin, you know, and he's talking about the roast and everything that happened. with. You know. So here we are introduced to Matt Hooper, who is played by Richard Dreyfus. Love that man. Oh, he is the only surviving of the three main men in this movie. And he actually had a lot to say about the party atmosphere while this movie was being filmed. It was just one big party. And he said... It's also 75. I'm going to paraphrase a quote from him. He said there was a lot of sex happening on set and he participated in as much as possible. He was a stud back (laughs) then. This was 1975. He wasn't going to do the movie. He wasn't going to. And I I don't recall. I think he did, uh, had a movie that did badly and he ended up wanting, or poorly, he ended up wanting wanting to do it. So he ended up, uh, he ended up, uh, joining the cast, and him and Robert Shaw butted heads, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So we pull him into the medical, uh, he gets pulled into the medical examiner's office, and they show him the <clears throat> remaining pieces of Chrissy Watkins, which we are led yeah. to believe basically was her upper torso from here and her head. And just the yeah, hair. <laughs> and he, you know, he says, this is not a boating accident. Haven't you checked out the waters, blah, blah, blah. So the medical examiner is like sitting there like, yeah, I screwed up. I screwed up. So he says, you know, this isn't Jack the Ripper. It's a shark. And 
you know, now he kind of confirms the suspicions, which obviously at well, this point, did. there's yeah. not much denying that it was a shark, but now we know that both incidents were sharks. And then beyond that, uh, we cut to this scene right here. So that shark right there, which was supposedly the shark that killed everyone, uh, was actually a real life tiger shark that was killed in Florida. And they had it shipped up to Martha's Vineyard. Where in Florida, though? I do not know. Uh, if, if memory serves me correctly, and I could be wrong, again, fact check me. Uh, if memory serves me collect correctly, it was caught in a fishing net or something like that and, okay. and, and, and killed. It's and, like open water. Okay. Yeah, and they, they, they shipped it up, and by the time it got to Martha's Vineyard, it was so badly decomposing that it made filming really difficult. <laughs> so uh, Hooper is measuring out the bite radius, the mm -hmm. shape of the mouth, and yep. basically saying, like, listen, this is a potential man-eater, the size is right, but this, the bite radius on the victim doesn't match. Fishermen are getting mad, everyone's getting angry, and we see Mrs. Kintner, who is the mother of the boy that died, she comes up looking all, oh, oh yeah, she was absolutely. lost a child. So she, you know, slaps Martin in the face, <laughs> and you're gonna get a kick out of this. Um, she was one of the people that was an extra from the island. So she wasn't an actress. She did a really good job, but she was really slapping Roy Scheider in the face. <laughs> 17 different takes they did, and they couldn't get her right, so she kept slapping I could. I want to see that real. I want to see that real. <laughs> whack, 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 whack. Uh, so she, whack, 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 whack. <laughs> and he was known to be a little bit difficult. Well, um, you know, I would be too. I mean, he just took 17 slaps to the face. <laughs> oh, I gotta do it again. So Not 17 times. I, I, I would love to slap you 17 times. <laughs> uh, you know, we find out, you know, potentially it might be a different shark, and uh, we get the scene with Martin and his son. Uh, his son's kind of mimicking everything he's doing at the yeah. dinner table, and that was actually, they were sitting on set, and the little boy that played Sean was really doing that. Well, it's a cute little scene. Right. Well, so he was really doing it, so Spielberg saw it and said, let's put this in the movie. So... Anyway, well, how did they know to just start filming there? Like, were, they, well, they were no, just filming they, they their recre downtime? They recreated it. Oh, okay. But he was naturally doing it, okay. and that gave them the idea, let's, let's have them really do this. So uh, we get a little bit more of a background on Hooper, why he loves sharks, you know, everything about him. And they decide that they're going to go cut the shark open and and see what's inside it to oh, see yeah. if, if the remains of, of the little boy uh, mm -hmm. are still in there because, you know, they... They're slow digest. Uh, they have a slow digestion system. <laughs> slow digestive slow system. Digestive system. Don't worry, so, I got you. So they cut the shark open, and milk comes out. And we're about to talk about milk in a second too. There's a lot of milk, milk. from what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but it's not blue. So. <laughs> so it's real. So yeah. it's real. So uh, they find you know license plate. They find fish, but no little boy. So they hop out on this really nice boat, which I don't know why they didn't take that instead of the piece of crap orca. Yeah. But then we wouldn't have a movie. Yeah. And. They're going out looking for the shark. Uh, Martin's drunk, so of course he's terrified of water, but he's going to go. And they come upon uh, Ben Gardner's fishing boat, and it's all torn up. So for some reason I have never fully understood, Hooper decides to jump in the water and go examine the hull. Uh, in you know, Clearly something just happened. So this was actually um, a scene that was added post-production. Uh, post so when they did the... Uh, it was like a reshoot. Yeah, well, no, they, what, what happened was they did a screen test, and the biggest uh, scream of the movie was when the shark comes out during the chumming scene. Okay, yeah. And yeah. Spielberg wanted a bigger scream on the head coming down of Ben Gardner. Um, so he wanted to reshoot it in an, a way to make it more suspenseful and a little scarier. And the studio, being over 100 days uh, behind uh, their schedule. They were supposed to be 52 days uh, and it ended up being 155. Spielberg almost got fired. Um, they refused to pay for it. So he came out of pocket and they filmed it in Verna Fields, who was the editor of the movie. Uh, they filmed it in her swimming pool. They dumped milk into the swimming pool and shot that last scene of Ben Gardner's head coming down and it has no eye. And, you know, I always... We, there's been a lot of debate as how he died. The shark didn't get him. So what the most common uh, uh, 
hypothesis was that he was so scared he had a heart attack or he hit his head mm -hmm. and yeah. the shark put a hole in the bottom of the boat which caused him to drown in the water and then little fish and crabs ate his eyeball well out. you can just imagine when a boat with the hull breaches like the, the boat shifts <laughs> there's a 20 foot shark and, yeah and it, like you're gonna get shifted knocked around you're gonna get beat up you know take a lot of beat the hits to the head mm -hmm. hits to the head and you know of course there's gonna be some scavengers gonna pick up yeah, the remains of course. Uh, well that scene ended up getting the biggest Biggest jump scare of the entire oh, yeah. movie. Uh, so Spielberg got his wish. Uh, and, you know, Spielberg actually wasn't the first director. I, I can't, again, remember the guy's name. His name was Dick something. He didn't last. No, he didn't. <laughs> Dicks usually don't. And I don't know if we're going to be able well, to They have a last that. resort, though. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, want that restaurant, I want that restaurant to sponsor us, too. Oh, my. Hey, Dick's listen, last resort. Hey. Anyone who's interested in sponsoring us, please... I, I actually, I don't know how they would do that. Uh, they could just message the emails right on the Email. um, it's on the YouTube. Right here. Right here. Two now step, you have more work. Two Step Entertainment LLC right at gmail.com. No, no, it's right here. You're going to put it there. It's not going to be there. It's going to be there. <laughs> it's not going to be there. People watching right now, it's there, isn't it? It's just him le leveling his hand going like this. and like I don't this. like you. You are not a good producer. So, <laughs> <laughs> Producer, anyway. director, editor, we know whatever. Yeah, but you're not the star like I am. Face for radio, buddy. Face for radio. <laughs> In your bra. So. <laughs> it's a cup. So they try to convince Murray Hamilton. They try to convince the mayor uh, of what they saw. Um, yep. Hooper, in his fear, dropped the large shark tooth. Um and, you know, when you see this boat has a huge hole in it and there's bite marks, I don't know how they couldn't convince him, but they were not able to convince him. He's more worried about someone painting sharks on their sign. And, of course, money motivated. He ignores the warnings from Hooper. You know, he's the expert. Why would you listen to him per every movie ever made with <laughs> horror uh, themes to it? Yes. So they decide to open up the beaches anyway. It's the 4th of July. They have extra uh, deputies. They have uh, shark nets. They have spotters. They have everything. And we get a nice little cameo from Peter Benchley. Uh, he plays the news reporter who is on the beach doing a little news story about white sand beaches when the sand is clearly not white. <laughs> but this was... Um, this is the scene where we first see the shark. So we have the shark spotters out there and... We have the two little boys with the fake fin. Okay, yeah. So, you know, you always get that that first, uh, oh, false alarm. You know, everyone's scared. No one was going into the water in the first place because uh, of the shark attack. So everyone's scared. Of course, the mayor talks them into going oh, yeah. into the water. And uh, we get the false alarm of the little boys. And, oh, he talked me into it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Then we see this this girl, and she's sitting there looking at the opening of the estuary. Uh, kind of goes into the the pond. Um, and Martin's uh, oldest son was in his sailboat, and they're trying to bring them in. They can't raise sail, and we see the what I've actually found out um, down the line to be the uh, Boy Scouts uh, leader. He's hmm. in a rowboat, you know. <clears throat> hey. Come on, like haul in the sheet, hurry up, let's go. He's trying to help them out. And we see a couple shark fins glide past uh, Sean while he's making sandcastles. And we get, you know, everyone talks about that first big reveal of the shark, but we get a pretty good shot of it. Not full on, but the enough. the boat gets, the little rowboat gets tipped over, and you see the shark come and grab the the, the scout leader by the by the um, the legs, and then you see him kind of come out of the water, and then the leg the leg fails. Scoutmaster is in the jaws of the shark with blood pouring down his face, and as the shark is taking him, he grabs on to Michael, the oldest boy, and he's holding on to him and keeping him out of the shark's mouth while he himself is dying in the shark's mouth, and then he pushes him out of the way for the shark to dive and finish eating him. So they determined it was far too gruesome. Oh yeah. And it, it was it's really I I that's one scene that I really wish they had been able to keep in the movie because as if you guys have looked it up, if you guys have seen it, it's amazing. So now the mayor is realizing that he screwed up. Now another person's dead and they have no choice. Summer's over. It's done. Uh -huh. The little boy, he survived. He's in shock. But we're going to pay Quint 
anything and everything that we can to kill this shark. And then they go out on the Orca. Now, that ship did not have the ability to drive from the top. Uh, it didn't have the mast, and it didn't have right. the pulpit. All that stuff was added um, specifically for the movie. The ability to climb up the mast and stand in the crow's nest, the ability to drive from the top as opposed to inside, and, the, and then the adding of the pulpit so they could shoot the barrel. So uh, as far as filming on the ship, there were quite a few things that Steven Spielberg did uh, that I really, really liked. He made sure that with the exception of towards the end when they're driving the boat back towards shore, you aren't able to see land. And he did that because uh, he wanted he wanted the audience to feel like they were they had no options. They were stranded basically. Um, and one of the issues, besides the fact that they were constantly seasick and constantly the cameras were going up and down, uh, one of the issues was the they didn't want you to be able to see any other boats. So yeah. if if a sailboat or something appeared on the horizon, they had to wait for it to pass and then reset, and it would take up to an hour. So filming was a nightmare. It I would was, imagine so. You had to wait an hour for the, the boat to just get out of the way. Yeah, and it was it's just so between... Much, the, there's only so much sunlight you have. Yeah, and between the, the shark not working and all the issues, they, they had so many problems. But there were a lot of scenes in this movie that were filmed at the water level. Um, to give the appearance of, you know, the shark being there, top, uh, out of the water, in the water, out of the water, in the water, which I thought was magnificent filmmaking. Um, like the POV, uh, POV uh, shots. Right, exactly. Those as well. Uh, there, there's a lot of different techniques that Spielberg used, but, you know, the, the production has been notorious for being riddled with errors. And... Uh, there's a lot, a lot that can go wrong, especially on a shoot like this on water. So many, did. just way too many variables, and, and everything that could go wrong. Well, did. 52 days that, that they wanted to do, and they did it 155. 155. Like that's 155. Like so that's a lot wrong. Before they ship out, uh, you see a little bit more of Quint. You know, he's kind of teasing Hooper about all his equipment, and he's you know, singing songs and doing all the stuff that Quint does in this movie. And Robert Shaw, I can't stress enough how amazing he was, but. Um, him and uh, Richard Dreyfus really butted heads, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that in the movie they were supposed to butt heads, and uh, Shaw was a method method actor, so he, mm. I, I think, yeah, that'll do it. created a lot of those scenarios, and and you know he was a big drinker, and there was one time he was <laughs> talking on set about how he wishes he could quit drinking, and. Richard Dreyfus took the drink out of his hand, threw it overboard, and he was not a small guy. He was not a small guy, so they had a lot of way to quit. Yeah, they had a lot of problems. So we get to the, pretty much the second half of the movie, which takes place on the boat, um, uh, the Orca, and they are. Uh, he's basically rod and reel fishing with this huge, oh, yeah. huge rod and reel. And there was a deleted scene earlier in the movie uh, where he says he uses piano wire as um, fishing lure. Because you know when you're fishing for bigger, uh, for bigger fish and, and everything, you use you know like especially sharks. They have shark teeth, sharp teeth, so you don't want to use the the regular uh, fishing line. You know, no matter what test it is, so you have the lure. But they they busted pretty much everything in this movie on MythBusters, and one of them was using the piano wire. So uh, you see that Brody's uh, chumming and. Uh, Quint's trying to teach him how to do a, a, I think it's a bowling knot, if I remember correctly. Mm, uh, a little brown eel comes out of the hole. So he ends up hooking <laughs> something, and they see the wire. So Quint's trying to reel it, uh, trying to go get a gaff to bring it up, and uh, it ends up breaking the line. Oh, and yeah. So, you know, we cut ahead and we get the infamous scene. The scene, one of the best improvised lines in the history of movie making. And. Brody is um, chumming, sorry. He's chumming the water and he says something to Quint along the lines of slow ahead. I can go slow ahead, come down and chum some of this. And he's throwing the chum in the water and the shark appears. And it's just a quick shot. Oh, yeah. And Very that's quick. the first time you really see the shark. I mean, really see it. Oh, you it. jump out of your seat when you see that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you get some better shots of the shark and... 
it's swimming by, and you know they have the side profile. There was, I, th- I think, I said there was three different mechanical sharks. They mm-hmm. named they named the shark Bruce after uh, Spielberg's lawyer, which is you know Finding Nemo. You see Bruce, so Bruce. you finally see the shark, and you see the method by which Quint is going to try to kill and bring up the shark, and he uses these big barrels, these big yellow barrels with a harpoon gun, and he harpoons them, and basically it's. So the shark can't dive and eventually drowns. So he's on the pulpit getting ready to shoot. It turns around. Hooper's supposed to be tying the knot. Sees that he's not there because he's trying to get his little shark transmitter. Anyway, they put a barrel into him and the shark goes under. So we see the shark finally. It's 1975. There's no CGI. It, the mouth, some of the stuff, it, you know, it didn't necessarily look like a great white, but... I think it still holds up. Yes, it's it's not what it sh- you know what it, what it would be today, but well, no, it's 1975. Exactly, and actually, uh, another fun fact: I uh, I read the other day that Greg Nicotero from uh, Walking Dead he does the Walking Dead um, uh, makeup and everything. Okay. He actually is refurbishing the last remaining shark. <clears throat> excuse me, animatronic shark from the original movie. He's going to be, there, his, him and his team are refurbishing it exactly the way it looked. Redoing the mm. eyes, everything. So, now it's nighttime, and we get the three guys, they're inside, they're having dinner, Quint's drunk, and they're comparing, surprise, compar- surprise. Yeah, right? They're comparing sharks, well, sometimes life imitates art. Mm. Uh, they're, they're comparing scars, and... They lead into a story and quite possibly the best piece of acting in the entire movie about the USS Indianapolis, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, It was the ship that uh, delivered the Hiroshima bomb, uh, and it got torpedoed and went under, and many of the uh, sailors were eaten by sharks. Um, The biggest... Uh, shark fatality incident to date. And you know, a lot of the sailors died from the explosion. A lot of them drowned. A lot of them uh, died from lack of water. But sharks did take a lot of the dead. And um, this scene was powerful. I mean, it, it didn't have anything to do with the actual animatronic shark. But Robert Shaw's acting in this scene was amazing. And another fun fact, he actually asked since he's supposed to be drunk in this scene, if he could drink and do it. And it turned out to be a terrible idea. Well, it's method acting right there. Exactly. And he he was sloppy and incoherent, and they said he just (laughs) did a terrible job. So the next day he came in, he apologized, he asked if he could have another shot, did one take. And in the movie, they actually have pieces from when he was drunk and pieces from when he was sober, and they mixed it together for the final product, and really impossible to tell which is which. And that's good acting. That's also good editing. <laughs> Thanks, Vera. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, Verna. Verna. Sorry, sorry, Verna. Well, she's passed away now. But so some of the dates, <laughs> some of the dates were incorrect uh, in the story. Uh, I'm sorry, in the USS Indianapolis speech. But it really set the tone for that night. And the shark ends up attacking the boat and punching a couple holes in it and you know Martin's freaking out he's terrified oh, yeah. and we see some shooting stars uh, in the scene and myself included in this pretty much everybody thought that it was added post production or during production I'm sorry and it was actually real shooting stars in this scene if you guys go back and look you'll be able to see exactly what I'm talking about so this scene was amazing and it gave us show me the way to go home I'm tired and I want to go to bed. I can't sing at all, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it in, though. <laughs> so I, I remember singing that song when I was, like, seven on the school bus with some of the other kids because they'd seen Jaws, too. Uh, Jaws also. So they had some trouble. Yeah, the the ship was flooding. Uh, sorry, the boat was flooded a little bit. Um, and... It cuts forward to the next day, and they're trying to make some repairs because salt water got in the fuel, and the barrel pops up. So when the barrel pops up, Quint is trying to tow it in and basically see where he's at. And the shark comes out and tries to bite him, and it ends up throwing the barrel. So the barrel's gone, yep. and Martin goes in, 
and he's trying to make a call. He's trying to call the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard was actually done by Sp Steven Spielberg. You can okay. tell it was Spielberg's voice. So he goes crazy, Quint does, and takes the baseball bat to the radio. Now they're stuck out there. They have no radio, and <clears throat> they end up, that's a little like Captain Ahab craziness out exactly. there. Exactly, and, that, and that's really, you know, especially if you read the book, the ending of the book, and I don't want to spoil anything yet, you know, because we're going to... There was a book! No, <laughs> well, you know, I, I, most of the time books are superior to the movie. Well, I, absolutely. Well, they have a lot more detail. I personally really liked the movie more. Uh, the, the book had a lot of, you know, like, Hooper was having an affair with Mrs. Brody, and there was mafia stuff, yeah. and there was all kinds of stuff going on, but... They end up getting uh, another barrel into them, and then they get a second barrel into them. So now they have two of those barrels in, and uh, you know, earlier in the movie he was talking about how it took two barrels to bring up a 16-foot shark. Uh, well, this is a 25-foot shark, and you know they determined he's 25 feet long and three tons, so not really too far out of uh, no. the realm of possibility, just a few feet bigger, a couple thousand pounds heavier maybe. But yeah. So they got two barrels in them. And they come up with this brilliant idea to tow the shark. Yeah, good the luck boat. with that. I mean, that's just crazy. I mean, they're try they're trying to drag this shark back to shore, and it actually reminds me of a of a story. And I'm gonna throw off topic a little bit slightly, but uh, when I was a kid, my dad had a friend named Victor. Uh, Vic, if you're watching, hey Vic, and we went out shark fishing one night, and my dad hooked. What he says was an eight-foot nurse shark, probably more like six. Sorry, Dad. Okay. But um, they ended up pulling it slightly onto the boat and tying a rope around its tail and then tying it to the stern cleat, which is the yeah. cleat at the back, and then dragging it back to shore. Now, most sharks are going to drown that way. Uh, nurse sharks can sit on the bottom. They don't need to be moving like most sharks to pass water over their it's like gills. It's like a sand shark down there. Yeah, it's a nurse shark. Um, they, they bite, but usually only if you screw with them. Mm -hmm. So they, I mean, it took us two and a half hours to get a couple miles because they were going so slow. Oh, yeah. They were worried about the rope getting cut. So we get about two to 300 yards away from the dock and he gets a little impatient, speeds up a little bit, cuts the line, lost the shark. <laughs> so I, I just remember Vic going, yeah, I feel like Quint right now. <laughs> and it's just from this movie. So they're dragging... Well, they're trying to drag the shark, and the shark ends up towing the boat backwards, which, again, Mythbusters busted it. it wouldn't have been able to. I mean, the water's flying up in the air, and there's, they start worrying about the transom being pulled out. So they end up uh, putting another uh, another barrel, and he shoots him under the chin, yeah. and they put another barrel on him. So now he's got three, and Quint is just continuous. as like, I hey, can't go down with three barrels. He's not going to go down with three barrels. There's no way. Never been done before. Well, of course... The shark goes under with three barrels. Oh, yeah. And this leads to my favorite scene, my favorite shot, at least, of the entire movie. Uh, Brody is pumping out the water, and he's kind of looking around like, man, we're going to sink. Starts climbing up the ladder to the uh, the deck where they drive the boat, and you see the boat get hit from underneath and almost tips over. And out from underneath the boat, you see a shot from above of the shark and just how big it is next huge. to the boat. Huge, huge. Um, I read somewhere that the boat was like almost 50 feet, but then I read today that the boat was 29 feet without... Well, that the, would make more sense. Yeah, it would, because the shark's 25. I mean, it was it yeah. was a awesome shot. Yeah, because the shark looked huge next to that boat. Huge. You know the shot I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know exactly yeah. what they're so, talking about. That was probably my favorite shot of the entire movie. You get to see the whole shark. It was really cool. Um, <laughs> you know, the one thing about the shark is you never see the tail go back and forth because no. it's mechanical. But <laughs> so at this point, they start driving the boat back to shore. You see land for the first well, yeah. time. They're they're making a break for the shore and they're trying to drag the water. I'm uh, sorry, they're trying drag to the lead shark. the shark into shallow water to drown it. And the shark is chasing them. And Quint, being the Ahab character that he is is pushing the engine. I mean, Hooper tries yeah. to warn him. They try to stop him. Like, you, you can slow down a little bit. You don't need to be doing this. And he's just... It's like flooding the engine. He, exactly. So he ends up blowing out the bearings of the engine. Mm -hmm. And now he has blown out the engine. He has destroyed the radio. And they are basically... He, he single-handedly sabotaged his survival. He's, yes. He was so obsessed with killing this thing and doing it his way that he... 
put them in a situation where they couldn't win. Such an ego. It, it's always, you know, and that's the thing about him. You know, he's not necessarily a bad guy, but so at this point, he's kind of admitted that he's defeated. Oh, yeah. You see the boat is is listing. It's going kind of down, but it's very slowly, you know. Yeah. But the, the whole cabin's filled with water. He gives them some life vests, and he sucks up his pride and asks Hooper, you know, let's talk about the, the chemicals and stuff that you have on board that can kill it. And Hooper comes up with the idea to get into the shark cage and harpoon it in the mouth with... You um, couldn't pay me enough money to hop in one of those shark tanks. <laughs> That's actually my... my I, if, I, if I actually wrote out a bucket list, I think my number one... No, thanks. My, <laughs> my number one uh, dream you, is, People do this for fun. Yeah, like, I, absolutely. Oh, I no, I, I, no, no. I, my, hey, guys, listen. If no, anyone out there... No. Wants to take me to Australia to cage dive. Australia too? Yeah, man. man. No. I love snakes. I love oh, sharks. Uh, I love animals. Stop it. He doesn't like snakes. Oh, I hate I him. have five. He, um, so, uh, that's why I don't go to his house. He doesn't. So he's admitted defeat. They start putting together this, this cage. And time for back-to-back-to-back to back to back fun facts. So they wanted to get some real live footage of sharks for the underwater cage scene. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this is a 25-foot shark. They don't, from what we know, get that large. So they needed a way to make the shark look bigger. So they ended up making a smaller version of the diving cage. Okay, yeah. And they ended up putting a little person in the cage with the sharks. So it was about a 16, 15, 16 foot shark, which is still a massive shark. That is a big shark. Um, so they put him, they put, they put the little person in, in, in the cage. So and the scale, it looked like it was right, 25. Exactly. Okay. Now, um, in the original script, Matt Hooper, Richard Dreyfus was supposed to die. But during one of the scenes with the live sharks, the great white got entangled in the wire that was holding the cage up. And, it was thrashing about. Luckily, the little person wasn't in the cage, but it completely destroyed the cage. And they got some amazing footage, which is why if you watch the movie, the orca had an inboard, inboard motor. and um, Yeah, yeah, inboard motor. And the boat, you could see up at the top, had an outboard. So this shark did get away, but completely destroyed the cage. And the little person, because he wasn't in the cage, they had to have Hooper survive. So they yep. changed up that scene and left that in the movie. And naturally... Good footage. Yeah, oh, it was amazing footage. And naturally, the little person refused to go into the cage again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would say. Absolutely. Um, right. So pretty much this this brings us to the... It's like going to dinner at Jeffrey Dahmer's house. Like, <laughs> what are you kidding hey, me? Hey, listen, listen. Uh, who played Dahmer recently? Um, very, very good looking guy. Zach Efron. Oh, well, no, that was... Was it Dahmer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that was John. But that was Ed Bundy. That was Bundy. Yeah, right. Ted Bundy. I'm Ted thinking. Bundy. Of, yeah, yeah. I, I get all my serial killers mixed up. John Wayne Gacy. So anyway, so this pretty much brings us to the climax of the movie. Um, they pull up the cage. They think Hooper's dead, and the shark jumps out of the water. Which, as a kid, you know, I thought, oh, there's no way. But we've actually seen footage. Now they've never jumped on a boat, but. Great whites do get some serious, like free Willy. serious air time. No, uh, no, and, you know, no. that's the thing. Uh, you know, sharks a lot of times uh, mistake humans for seals, whether they're surfing and stuff. So a lot of times great whites are test biting just to see what you are. It's like a nibble. Right. But they're so powerful that the, the people end up bleeding out. If mm -hmm. sharks actually hit people and like a uh, viewer discretion advised on this, there was a woman named Shirley Ann some D something I don't remember she was snorkeling and a great white from what experts say uh, hit her with a feeding response strike and bit her in half uh, and right in front of her family is terrible and it, you know if her family somehow sees this I'm really sorry it was a long time ago but there's a big you know when when a great white is actually hitting you full bore so you know as rare as it is it, it's really really devastating and they're Absolutely. just powerful creatures man they, they've been around for millions of years they'll probably mm -hmm. be around after us if we don't uh kill them all uh you know but people who think that sharks are better off dead don't understand that without sharks 
we lose a lot of stuff in, uh, in this world. Like our oceans would it's be part of our ecosystem. Devastated. It's just part of the ecosystem that how we you know live yeah in sharks this world. sharks are es- are essential and. When we just are, like bees, like how the the impact little bees mm-hmm. would have just on uh, it would be catastrophic. So if you know, we we go into their homes, we are taking up their oceans, and we have we don't have rights over them. I mean, you know, I get it, humans versus animals, but the thing is, we you go you go into their into their world, their king. You know, we may yeah. be we may be the top apex predator because of our brains, but without weapons, without that we're not nope. anywhere near the top. But anyway, so we come to the climax of the movie and the shark jumps out of the water and lands on the boat. And this is where we see Quint finally meet his demise. And it was a lot different than the book. In the book, it was a very Ahab ending. He harpoons the shark, the rope gets wrapped around his leg, yeah. the shark dies, he drowns. And uh, the, the right, uh, Peter Benchley just absolutely hated the explosion ending. Well, I mean, he got thrown off of set. I mean, it is the Fourth of July. <laughs> well, he got he got he got he got have explosions, <laughs> boom boom. So he he got thrown off of set because he was so angry, and he ended up saying down the line that he liked the ending. So you know he well, he, good as far as I know. As, well, uh, well that's, that's the excuse so, I'm gonna take. Right. So I'm accepting that. The boat like. the boat was uh, was being sank sunk sunken. Sure. Sink. It we're, was going down. We're gonna go and, with that. Uh, uh, Roy Roy Scheider didn't trust the rescue divers so he had like hatchets hidden throughout the cabin <laughs> and um the the boat starts sinking and he goes up to the mast and of course there's a little bit of foreshadowing talking about the uh compressed air tanks blowing up yep. so he throws it into the shark's mouth for some reason the shark decides to leave it in his mouth and <laughs> he's taking shots as the boat's sinking and you have some really good music some really suspenseful action he's yeah. missing missing and then of course that big line which i'm sure you're gonna bleep out smile you son of yes a- i am actually you know what real quick this is actually i leave this i actually do this exact scene when i do your top 10 i don't I, yeah. did you actually watch the top 10 i don't know i don't know if you did but on the top stuff. Uh, well uh, no, I'm just There's kidding. that ego. <laughs> anyway, so, so actually, that's the scene I actually put in in his top ten. It's actually the end scene where he's firing off at the at the compression mm-hmm. tank. Uh, it's a it's a great scene, and and actually, I, I do want to rewind a little bit because I I do want to talk a little bit more about Quint's death. Robert Shaw, I cannot stress enough, was absolutely brilliant, amazing, phenomenal, terrific, great during his death, and. I remember I was I, I drive for work and I don't watch videos because I'm driving, but I do listen. Good, good. Follow the law. Arrive alive. Don't text and drive. So I I do I do listen to scenes and you know I get in bumper bumper and I was just watching it one day and I was just sitting there like this is the, the opening scene and this scene right here are just terrifying. I mean, oh yeah, we, that. Was terrifying. I mean, we're we're really desensitized to gore and everything, but the screams, his screams while he has like this massive shark just around me, like being swallowed little by little. You know, and it may not be realistic for how sharks eat, but I mean, he did an amazing job. And there's <laughs> there's some deleted scenes of him in the mouth just ah, <laughs> and um, you know the blood comes out. And I remember when I was a kid. Um, it was the 20th anniversary. It would have been 1995. It was the 20th anniversary, and it was on TBS for like a month straight. And I remember that they cut out most of that scene of it, it biting him and biting Well, him and biting a lot, lot of her, like on AMC, they cut out uh, quite a few bit, too, when they do well, it on AMC. Now, I watched it on TV maybe three weeks ago, and now nothing's cut out. I mean, the, the huh. cuss words, bitch, this, that, everything was well, cut out. Also, depends on what time they're showing. Well, well, everything was cut out, and now almost nothing is. It just shows you <laughs> how much things yeah, change. And I remember as a kid, you know, you're I'm seven, eight years old, and 20 years seems like eternity. But now I was thinking, I'm like, it's been 24 years since I watched it. It's been longer since I watched the 20th anniversary than it was at that point. From yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's crazy. So we get this magnificent, amazing explosion where you see blood and guts and debris, and I don't know who was in charge of that, but they did 
an amazing job. I just think they just threw everything in a pot and just like, hey, let's blow some stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Let's just blow some stuff up. Let's see what happens. But they, you know, they, they, they blew it up and comes to the end. Uh, you know, the movie comes to an end. And they initially, I, I read um, that they were going to have a scene where after that happens, you see a bunch of shark fins coming towards Brody. And it ends, and I'm like, oh, oh man, no, that... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't I, like yeah, that. you we got a happy ending. And, yeah. and the second movie was pretty. It was it was a pretty good sequel. Uh, you know, they, they brought back um, brought back Roy Scheider, but after that, they were just they were bad. But uh, so we see that that Hooper survived, and they end up swimming back to shore, and you know we get a happy ending. And to this day. Um, it's my it's my second favorite movie and and honestly the, I always say that my favorite movie is Jaws and Jurassic Park but yeah. if I had to pick I'm not one of those people where if you ask me to pick one I can say I don't say both I'll give you an answer <laughs> and if Jurassic Park is a 10 this is a 9.99999 everything from the suspense to the gore to the acting to the Music, especially. I mean, it's a great score. Great see, score. when when the Meg came out, the yeah. most recent movie, yeah. I read the book series and I loved the book series. And it was over the top, but the first two books, especially, were were really good. And I was just hoping, deep down, that they would pretty much do something similar to Jaws. I never expected it to be anywhere near as good, but I was hoping they would do. A serious movie with serious actors and mm. quality actors, and happen to have a megalodon. And then I see that they cast Jason Statham, and I don't have a problem with Jason Statham at all. But that's not the type of movie I didn't. He's an action star. He's an action star. You know, right? this Jaws was a action block. It was the first summer blockbuster, but compared to what we consider action movies now. It's just ridiculous over the top. And, you know, Jaws had some stuff that was over the top. But, but I couldn't imagine a remake now. I couldn't imagine no, how, what, no. what they would do with the remake. But, you know, all the CGI that'll be, like, engulfed yeah, in it. Like, it'd be... It, no, you okay. know, and, and I I knew I was going to be disappointed when I saw Statham. But Statham ended up being the best thing in that movie, in my opinion. Well, yeah, it, exactly. I was hoping, and again, I know it wasn't going to be as good as Jaws, but I was hoping for a quality-type movie. Um, similar to Jaws, and and I got Piranha 3D. Yes, and yes. and listen, guys, I love bad <laughs> movies. I do. I love bad movies. I love good movies. I love Deep Blue Sea. I Sharknado was purposely horrible. It was funny. Okay, I I like bad movies, but The Meg was just. Honestly, the most. Wait, Deep Blue is what with LL Cool J, yeah. right? Yeah, I like Deep that one. Blue I like that. My head is like a fuck. So <laughs> it was the most disappointed I have ever been in a movie in the theater. Uh, yeah, ever. You went to the theaters to see Meg? Yeah. You have. You don't understand. I mean, I would have went to IMAX just just you, to see it. You don't it, understand. But. When I first, I I was going through some issues and I decided to start p to pick up reading again. And okay. it was midnight on a Sunday, and I, I Googled books like Jaws, and I came up with a Meg. I started reading it at 12.30 at night and put it down at 7.30 in the morning, finished. Huh. I read all five books in the series in five days. And when I say read, I also like I downloaded the audio book. Oh, yeah. See, I can do that. I, I can't sit and read a book for I, that long. I read... I read the entire first one, but while I work, I can't, you know, I, I drive yeah. all day. So I, I download the audiobook. I would go between, and, and the, the Trench, which is the second the uh, okay. second one, the second book, the the audiobook uh, voiceover guy was amazing. He did all the voices, and I know we're getting a little off topic, but all in all, guys, Jaws is still to this day my second favorite movie of all time. I hope it never gets remade. If it does... I will go see it, but I, yes, I really doubt they'll yes, ever will. touch it. Um, you know, it, it's it's just a masterpiece. It really is. No, it's a great movie. Like I said, first summer classic or summer blockbuster. So it's it actually set the example for what we see every summer. That's why there's a every summer there's a blockbuster movie coming out every single year, and this was the first. And this is why. Yeah, and. You know, like I said, first movie to $100 million, it was riddled with errors. It never should have, have been finished. And it's 
a, a situation where it made Steven Spielberg. Yep. It really did. I mean, he has look at all the stuff he's done now, and he took he took a bad situation and ended up making a movie better because of it. If if that shark was working, I do not think we'd be sitting here talking about Jaws in such a high regard. Well, think about it too. He wouldn't have E.T. at that point. Like, nope. E.T. would have never ever happened if the success nope. from Jaws didn't occur. Jurassic Park, everything. Nope. Everything. So, uh, you know, it, in my opinion, 9.9. It, it's a 9.9. 9. 9. 9. 9. I can't 9. give anything a 10. I, I'm, I'm going to take El Presidente, uh, El Prez, <laughs> uh, Por- Dave Por- Portnoy, is that it? Uh, yes. If, if you give something a 10, there's no possibility of anything ever beating it, ever being better. But Jaws is an amazing movie. And actually, they were supposed to have it at the beach again this weekend. And due to some licen- licensing issues, they were unable to well, use absolutely. Jaws. You know what they replaced it with? Meg? <laughs> you ready, you ready to beep out this? What no. A bunch of goddamn. Awful movie. Okay? Awful movie. But uh, I really appreciate you having me. I, I love talking I love about Jaws. You um, it's just an amazing movie and I could talk about it all day I could do another two hours but I'm sure that the people watching at home probably don't want to listen to me talk anymore so I'm going to let you wrap things up and I'm going to go wrap things up in my own way well there you go there you go hey guys if you guys like what you see don't forget like comment subscribe hit the little bell you'll get a notification every time you want to see my pretty face on YouTube it's been a pleasure. Man, thanks Thank for you. coming out. And uh, I'm going to go get ready to uh, drink some hot sauce with you. That's going to be so, fun. Hey. Oh, it's not going to be with hey, me. But No, you put that down. That's my it's Twinkie. Be, That's my Twinkie. You better save that Twinkie. That toe of Satan's going to be wonderful. Put down my Twinkie. What are you Thank doing, you guys. Bro? Like you said, subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell, let you know when we come out with another video. Now, if you want to see him on another video, recommend a video, a horror movie that he will like. We'll get him to watch it. We'll come back here and comment on it and talk about it for an hour. Just let us know. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. You guys stay horrified. And this was the Killer Collab.